wind provisions used to be in one chapter, chapter 6 of ACE 705. That chapter, if you look at ACE 710, is empty. Wind provisions have gone to the back of the book to multiple chapters, 26 through 31. So, six new chapters on devoted to wind design. Uh, one thing you will see that is new in those chapters are user notes within boxes, which ACE 7 has never used before. The purpose of those user notes is not to give you commentary. The intent is to intent of those user notes is to clarify the applicability of the wind provision to which a user note is attached. Okay, very very limited uh, kind of uh, uh, objective there. Now the first thing uh, I think uh, is to uh, fully understand the new setup uh, as compared with the old. Uh, what what is the basis of the new organization and and that's what this slide is about and the following slide uh, ACE 705 as all of you know by now has three so-called methods of wind design method one is just called simplified design method two analytical procedure method three design based on wind tunnel testing now, under method two, analytical procedure, there are two distinct and separate methods. There is the general analytical procedure applicable to buildings of all heights. This one is also called the all heights method. And then there is the low rise analytical procedure applicable to buildings having mean roof height not exceeding 60 feet. Now, these two methods are distinct and separate. They come from different origins, frankly, from different motivations. And, and very importantly, if you design the same structure by the two methods, you are not going to end up with the same designs. Yet, both of them are under the same heading of analytical, of method two analytical procedure. Also, very importantly, Method one, simplified design, is a simplified version of the low-rise analytical procedure under method two. One was derived from the other, and if you just look, you will see that there are very strong, distinct similarities between the two. Uh, also, from the beginning, and, and whenever I talk about beginning in the context of wind design of ASC 7 the wind design that we are doing today originated in the 1972 edition of, of what is now ACE 7. Back then it was NCA 58.1, uh, NC standing for American National Standards Institute. Uh, anyway, from the beginning, back in 1972, there has been a distinction made between the main wind force resisting system and the components and cladding of a building. So, main wind force resisting system and components and cladding, that is a big divide in, in the wind provisions. Uh, the distinction is based on the fact that components and cladding are directly loaded by the wind whereas the main wind force resisting system derives its loading from components and cladding so so that is the basis of the distinction uh, anyhow for the reorganization ace7 has chosen to call the all heights method the general analytical procedure of AC705, a directional procedure, because in this method, the wind direction counts. Wind blowing from left to right will give you a different pressure diagram than wind blowing from right to left. 
wind blowing from front to back will be a different pressure diagram yet. The low rise analytical procedure and its simplification method one of AC705 are on the other hand envelope procedures because in those methods the wind direction does not count. Things have been tested in the wind tunnel under all conceivable wind directions and envelope values of pressure coefficients that were obtained from the wind tunnel testing have been given as the backbone of these methods.